All right, greetings uh, and welcome to the 2021 uh, graduation recognition ceremony for the Department of Physics and Astronomy. I'm uh, Ken Barish. I'm chair of the Department uh, of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, before we get started, just a few uh, technical uh, issues. Uh, first, our, uh, a link to the program is in the chat window. Uh, I encourage you to use the chat uh, throughout the ceremony. Um, I would also like to ask everyone to make sure their audios are muted. And I uh, also encourage you to have your videos on to make it more personal. Uh, but note that the ceremony is being recorded. Uh, it's also being live streamed to YouTube and will be uh, publicly available after the ceremony. Uh, so I would now like to introduce Professor Catherine York, who's Dean of the College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences to give us a welcome. My turn to unmute. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Catherine Urich. I'm the Dean of the College of Natural and Agricultural Sciences, or CNAS for short. And thank you, um, Professor Barish, for the invitation to celebrate the accomplishments of the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And on reflection, I was thinking about this. I started at CNAS about the time many of you began, also began your academic journey at UC Riverside. And on reflection, it's really been quite the journey. So because of our proximity to my office, I've crossed paths with many of you through the classrooms, outside of the you know, physics uh, auditorium, even though it's being uh, renovated right now, sometimes the research labs, various student events, when on Friday afternoons, when I was walking my dog, Athena, around the area. And I really enjoyed all the conversations that I had, however casual. Um, and so I have to bring up the pandemic. Uh, even before the pandemic hit, myself and the faculty and staff were already so proud of your accomplishments. But then again, as we know, the pandemic hit about 16 months ago, 15, 16 months ago, and our world changed completely. And what is phenomenal is that you all continued on despite everything that was happening, the economic uh, issues, the social justice movement, the complete move to online classes, even our labs were online. It was pandemonium in some sense. And you overcame all these obstacles to graduate today. And on that alone, I just couldn't be more proud and a bit in awe. So your class is very unique. There's going to be no other class ever to come again that's going to have that flexibility, the perseverance, and you will be inspiring generations of students to come. So please know that no matter where life takes you, you will always have a family here in the Department of Physics and Astronomy in CNAS and at UCR. So uh, I, I congratulate you on behalf of the parents, families, faculty, students, staff, and your loved ones in graduating. So congratulations, graduates of 2021. So thanks, uh, Catherine, and also for your unwavering support of uh, the department and our students. Uh, uh, it's, it's much appreciated. And this type of recognition ceremony, I think, uh, shows that it's a, a, a good investment. Um, so what I'd like to do now is give a brief intro, uh, then uh, Professor Melissa Franklin will give an address, and then and we'll follow that by our undergraduate and graduate uh, recognitions uh, and awards. Uh, so just to start off, of course, central to the mission in the, it, it, central to our mission is the training and mentoring of students to be the best prepared to have a challenging, rewarding and fulfilling future. And this ceremony is the most meaningful event each year. It represents that we have been succeeding. Of course, a lot of uh, what we do is uh, introduce our students to give the opportunity for cutting edge research and set them on a path uh, for their careers. Let's see if this works. Okay, so just a little bit about the department. Uh, so you're more familiar. So the department, we now have 45 uh, Senate faculty. 164 undergraduate students, and uh, actually, I didn't update this. It's like 100. It's a little smaller because of the pandemic. So our number of graduate students is about 10 uh, smaller, uh, but we expect that to rebound uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we have a record number of graduating bachelor's degrees, 52. That beats our record from last year, which was something like 45 or 50, which beats the record from the year before. So there's an incredible uh, trend, which I'll also show you in a little bit. We have 16 uh, students uh, that have earned a master's degree, 
and 13 uh, doctors in philosophy. Again, a little bit lower than the last three years because likely because of at least partially from delays due to the pandemic. Uh, we have a good healthy class coming in. Uh, currently these things fluctuate about the 35 freshmen and 17 uh, transfer undergraduate students and uh, 26 graduate students as we start to uh, go back and increase uh, the number of our students. Uh, we then have enough faculty really to address uh, really the key grand challenges in both physics and astronomy. Uh, we touch on a wide breadth of, uh, of areas in physics and what uh, brings us together is our quest for fundamental knowledge. Uh, so we address from uh, the very large origins of the universe, which includes uh, astronomy, uh, things like you've heard, inflation, galaxy formation, dark energy and dark matter, as well as uh, elementary particle and nuclear physics, uh, as well as synthesizing new materials and understanding properties on an atomic scale. There are condensed matter, including bio and AMO and nano, uh, et cetera. Uh, we've been able to, since we've been able to recruit faculty positions for uh, more than many other institutions, we really have a fantastic and distinguished set of uh, faculty. Again, I mentioned that we have uh, 45. And I just want to point out that we really emphasize all aspects that are central to. So these include uh, teaching and mentoring awards. Uh, I'm particularly proud of our junior faculty. Uh, they started a junior faculty excellence in teaching awards just a few years ago. And the and, uh, faculty from physics and astronomy has, what has gotten about a third of those across the entire uh, university, including two this year, which I'll highlight when I get to the faculty. Uh, also our, our, our commitment to uh, diversity. We've gotten three commitment to the graduate diversity awards, for example. Uh, as well as other uh, teaching awards. Again, we've been able to recruit the very best uh, junior faculty. Uh, we have a recent PCAS uh, award winner. Uh, basically all of our faculty over the last 10 years are getting uh, NSF career awards. So we've had 10 over the last 10 years, including three this year, um, as well as the awards, uh, junior awards from the other agencies like uh, DOE, uh, Navy, uh, et cetera, as well as a Sloan and a Cottrell, which are uh, particularly uh, noteworthy. Uh, our senior uh, awards are also doing pretty well. We have a Nobel Prize, a National Academy member, Princess of Asterius Award, uh, many uh, um, professional uh, society awards from uh, APS, uh, also Guggenheim uh, Humboldt, Henry Draper, Enrico Fermi and uh, Panofsky Prize. We currently have uh, three uh, endowed chairs, uh, our faculty in our department. Uh, the presidential chair is Jing Shi, uh, Inclusive Excellence, uh, Roy Andy, and uh, Teaching Research and Service in CNAS, uh, Barry Barrett. So I just wanna flash the faculty because uh, so you remember them and also to highlight again, uh, some of the award winners from this year in observational and uh, theoretical uh, cosmology our astronomy and astrophysics. We have 10 faculty uh, working uh, in many different areas, but particularly noteworthy for the UC system is access uh, to the CAC as, uh, as we co-run it with, uh, with Caltech. Uh, I'm highlighting Anton Delosio because he was uh, one of our three uh, winners of the career award uh, this year. On the high energy and uh, nuclear physics, again, we work in facilities ar around the world, uh, both at, uh, at CERN LHC, as well as uh, Rick and Electron Ion Collider at um, Brookhaven National Lab and Jefferson Lab uh, as well. Uh, I highlight, I should double highlight uh, Flip Tenedo. He was winner both of uh, Junior Excellence in Teaching Award, as well as a Career Award. So. Um, we're opening up a new area. This is just uh, beginning uh, in experimental cosmology and gravitational waves with, uh, with Barry, of course, uh, but also we have a new faculty joining us in a few days. Uh, he's already been active 
and submitting grants at Jonathan Richardson. And we plan in these uh, exciting emerging fields to hire a few more hires over the next uh, few years. Our condensed matter, uh, which represents the largest group, although this again, it, uh, we're also including uh, biophysics as well as AMO. Uh, here I highlight uh, Berge Hammerling for win winning uh, one of the Junior Excellence in Teaching Awards and Peng Wei uh, for winning a career award. Education is uh, central to our mission. And we have uh, one uh, faculty whose uh, focus is on teaching and physics education research. And we have an academic coordinator to support our undergraduate um, uh, teaching efforts. Of course, I'm a physicist, so I can't have a presentation without showing a couple charts. Uh, this is our chart of uh, the graduate students and uh, graduating students. So the one in red is the graduating students. And the important thing to note is we're really accelerating both in total number of students as well as uh, graduates over the last uh, few years. So, uh, so, so that's really uh, tremendous. Uh, our, we really grew our, program, our graduate program up to the point that we could support them with our faculty uh, up to the last uh, five or 10 years. And uh, now we're graduating uh, on the average of 17 uh, PhD students a year. Again, a slight dip uh, this past year, which uh, I think will come back uh, relatively quickly. This actually is a significant number if you look at the institutions across uh, the US, there actually aren't that many that graduate uh, more than uh, 17 or uh, 17 PhDs a year. Again, our average over more than 10 years is uh, 17. And uh, all of the uh, institutions that are represented are uh, the most distinguished in physics. Uh, I also wanna note that uh, uh, for those of you graduating, uh, stay in touch. Uh, we do produce a yearly, in addition to updating our websites and stuff, we produce a yearly uh, newsletter. Uh, this happens to be last year's, but we do have this year's um, also available already. Uh, this one just seemed a little more positive. <laughs> the, 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 the one this year isn't negative, but it talks about, of course, a year in the pandemic. Uh, but I think uh, with this uh, largely behind us, uh, we'll basically continue our uh, incredible uh, slope. Okay, so those that was uh, just a short intro to the department. Um, now, if I can do the right thing. Okay. So now I'd like to move on to our address. Um, I'm truly honored to introduce our keynote speaker, speaker Melissa Franklin. She's the Mellencrat uh, Professor of Physics at Harvard University. Uh, Professor Franklin is a distinguished experimental particle physicist. She was co-discoverer of the top quark and the Higgs boson, two of the biggest discoveries in particle physics in the last generation. Um, she, uh, became, she was the first woman to receive tenure in the uh, physics department at Harvard and she also served as the chair. And uh, most notably for us, uh, she agreed and, and served on as an outside member of our advancing faculty diversity uh, searches. So I'm uh, very happy that uh, uh, Melissa uh, accepted our invitation and I'll turn it over to Melissa. Hey, hi, uh, thanks for the introduction. Um, you really have an amazing department there. I was kind of feeling a little bit bad because I, I haven't won any prizes. <laughs> so <laughs> I started feeling like, oh no. Um, and I see, a bunch of, I see a bunch of people who I have from my past, who professors who are now at, uh, at UC Riverside in the, it, it, they have their cameras on. So it's very nice to see everybody and to meet everybody. I'm, it's a great pleasure actually to be connected to you, especially the students the graduates of uh, UC Riverside Physics Department, all of you uh, at all levels graduating with the various undergraduate masters and PhD degrees. Um, uh, I'm very 
I'm very glad to meet you here. I must confess without students to teach and to work with, uh, it wouldn't be fun at all to be a university professor. It would be very sad, very, very sad indeed. So watching you graduate, even students I've never met, I already like you, it's weird. I mean, for those of you who have your cameras on, I've already kind of made some connection. I'm imagining who you are. Uh, so, so when you're watching you graduate, it's, it's both uplifting and it's also giving hope for the future. And also it, there's a sense of loss. Uh, whenever students graduate, uh, we feel some loss. Uh, luckily it's momentary because new students come. We've had you for a few years, uh, but it seemed too short. It always seems too short. Um, luckily new students come so faculty can recover and they don't have to go into deep psychoanalysis. Um, this has been a particularly hard year for students, students and faculty, requiring a lot of adaptability and strength. Uh, you know, friends and family have died in some cases and many of us have been isolated and school's been online. And professors have responded by giving you more work uh, because they think you have more time because what are you doing? You're just sitting at home. And they've also offered more Zoom time with you, <laughs> which sometimes doesn't help. Um, some of the students have decided to wait until the world resumes normal life, um, counting on that it might do that. You have uh, decided to persevere through this pandemic and uh, that shows a, a lot of strength, I think. Uh, we've learned a lot this past year. I've learned that I can talk endlessly uh, in a Zoom room. Um, I, um, I have a colleague, uh, Nima Arkani Hamed, who recently gave a 13 hour Zoom lecture <laughs> to a conference. I just, I just think like we're a little bit out of control on the faculty side with Zoom. I think uh, it doesn't matter who's on the other side, we're happy to talk about physics. Anyhow, hopefully what you've learned is that you can say no to professors. Um, so one question you might be asking yourself at, at all different levels is, am I a physicist now? And, um, and so as I was preparing this talk, I started thinking, uh, are we different, you and me? Um, you, me and you, the person who just graduated with a bachelor's degree, or you and me, the master's degree or the PhD. Um, and I know that I am old and you are young, so we def obviously that's different. But And I know that I'm on the East Coast and you're on the West Coast, and we all know that's very, very different. Um, but we have a lot of in common. We kind of know how to entertain ourselves with physics and to entertain ideas about physics. So as far as I'm concerned, we're all physicists now. I mean, you might be thinking, hmm, I've just done my undergraduate degree. And I'd be thinking, yeah, that's enough. You're a physicist, <laughs> get used to it. All that stuff they do in graduate school is just sort of about discovering new physics. You, you've learned the physics that's already there. And this is kind of a weird thing. Um, this may be a weird speech, by the way. I just wanna preface by saying, I'm sorry <laughs> if you find it weird. Um, but most of the physics we learn, we learn in the first four to five years. And I was thinking, it seems surprising to me that it only takes four or five years to learn physics. I mean, why should it only take four or five years? We've been doing physics for thousands of years, but that's one time scale. The only other time scale I know that's relevant is a thought takes about a hundred microseconds. Out of those two things, I still can't get four years. <laughs> How do we decide that four years was the right time? Um, and I think it would be weird if it took 50 years to learn physics. Science would progress much more slowly. Um, I think, you know, you'd get really, really sick of problem sets after about 30 years. I think the student debt would go up quite a bit. Um, but there's something marvelous about the fact that we can do things with physics pretty quickly after we learn it, uh, you know, somewhere say between three and eight years. Uh, 
And you're thinking, okay, I don't believe that's true. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot more I have to learn, but I can tell you I have evidence. You know, how many textbooks are there? I mean, about one subject. I mean, there's lots of different people write textbooks, but how many textbooks do you need in your office as a fully fledged physicist? Let's say you're 64 years old and you look in your office, you have, you only really need about 20 textbooks. That sort of tells you, and I, actually 20 is an overstatement. I think you need 10. There's about 20 in there and about 10 that are sort of dog-eared. So there is a sense in which what you've learned as an undergraduate now and what you've learned as a master's student is enough to start doing physics. Uh, so I'll give you an example. Um, one day the Cirque du Soleil called me. Cirque du Soleil is a, you know, a circus. And uh, they called me and they said, we have a problem with our Tongan bat baton twirler. He has a baton, a large baton that's fire on both ends and he twirls it, looks really good. And the fire marshals all across the country are saying he can't twirl his baton anymore. Could you please calculate how far his baton <laughs> will go into the audience if he lets go? So here's an example of a problem all of you could solve. And it's obviously I had to write up, you know, to dear fire marshals, when the Tongan baton twirler <laughs> drops his baton or when it goes flying, it will not go into the audience. This is what it will do. Here's the moment of inertia, et cetera, et cetera. So there is a lot you can do that you probably haven't thought about, like working for the Cirque du Soleil. So no matter what happens next, we're all physicists of some sort. So what exactly does that mean? What does it mean to be a physicist? What is a physicist? You know, they used to use the term natural philosophers for a physicist until they realized that some of us who just measured things really well, like Faraday or, or me, for instance, uh, couldn't be considered philosophers. They were not smart enough. So they coined a new term, uh, scientist. And from scientist, we got scientist. You know, it's a little more applied, a little less lofty uh, in the mind of a philosopher. So I often ask myself, I like asking myself questions uh, when I have nothing else to do. When exactly am I doing physics? So I, I'm going to start in the morning. I get up in the morning and uh, I drink coffee. Not lots of people do that, not necessarily physics. Then I take a shower. That could be some thinking physics in there, but not exactly physics. Giving a lecture, performing a calculation. No, those are like, other people could do that. Writing code to make a histogram, soldering things together, solving a system of equations, deciphering a circuit diagram. None of these are close. Maybe the closest thing I could come is writing a problem set solution, but I already know that. So that's maybe not doing physics. So none of these is technically physics. So when are we doing physics? This is, you, you wonder why I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this because if we wanna know, if you wanna know, are you a physicist now? Then we have to know what it means to be a physicist. And I think I have a hypothesis. This is new, so you can tell me what you think. Doing physics is doing anything while thinking about physics. Which means that as you guys go forward, you're gonna be physicists. There's, you don't have, um, you don't really have much of a choice. Uh, you know, you may be one of those students who says, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a physics degree, but all my friends are art historians or, or English majors. I don't really identify with being a physicist. Um, and you have more fun with those friends, but let's face it, we, you and I, have a lot in common. The way we are always taking limiting cases, the way we love imagining X going to infinity, the way we always wanna write the shortest problem set solution or the most elegant equation, the way we use words sparingly in text, the fact that we can't actually talk or 
say what we mean unless we have a whiteboard and we can make diagrams. I remember one time I was going to the psychiatrist uh, for anxiety. And uh, I got there, I got into the psychiatrist's office and I looked around and I saw there was no whiteboard. And I said, I don't understand. How are we going to talk? <laughs> There's no whiteboard here. How are we going to, how can I explain without diagrams? So no matter what you do uh, next, some part of your brain there's a new part of your brain, not the lizard brain and not the mouse brain and not the monkey brain, but the physics brain. So now you have a part of your brain which is there forever. And I haven't drawn it here. I've just shown you the other ones. So congratulations on your new brain. Felicitations, you're one of us. Okay, so the PhDs are a little more, more complicated. Um, they have a, they have tiny additions to their brain as well. There's a part of graduate school where we lose perspective. Um, we can somehow convince ourselves that we are simply incapable of calculating our way out of a paper bag. Now, actually the soft condensed matter people can, actually they find it hard to do that calculation also and they're pretty smart. <laughs> um, but when students get to that point, it, it helps to have a family member, or at least someone not inside the university to remind them just how capable they are after all, they've already had the four years of physics training and they have the physics brain. So I like to think of, of graduate school in physics sort of like as listening to a jazz quartet play a jazz tune. Maybe, maybe a piano, a stand-up bass, drums, and a saxophone. It sort of starts, I don't know if you've ever listened to jazz, um, but sort of starts with a melody sort of like the first year grad courses. You know, they play the melody a few times, like maybe quantum and e and m And then comes the bridge. Maybe that's the start of research. You start reading a few papers, taking some measurements, getting a feel. And then come the kind of crazy solos. Each instrument takes a solo, the piano starts. You can't make out the melody, but you can sort of tell that there's some of the same chords, the sax goes really far out there. You no longer know what you're doing. You're just somewhere hanging far away. You don't know where you are. It's not clear. The solo has nothing to do with the, me the melody. Maybe you're looking for a research topic and then the stand-up bass comes. It sounds nice. It's piccato, but it's not something you understand. And then finally, you hear that swish, swish, swish on the drums and the tune resolves, the melody comes and the entire quartet plays together. And this, this is the first words of the thesis written, the first histogram plotted to be put in the thesis, the acknowledgements written, and we're ready for the next tune. I love that feeling listening to jazz. I love that resolution. And I love watching students get that resolution. Doing a PhD is really the new cool. I have to say it's weird giving a talk on Zoom, but I'm just imagining, I can, I'm looking at one person and I'm thinking, okay, he's not asleep. <laughs> so that's good. Um, Oops. So one thing that's useful is to have role models. I've been told that. But when I was young, there weren't so many women who were around, but that's okay. But the men weren't exactly right. And I didn't have a role model, but I think I have a kind of linear combination of role models now. 
And I think when I was young, what sufficed was just being surrounded by wild and crazy physics desperados. Literally physicists who work like crazy, rode horses, drank bourbon and drove pickup trucks. Now I have a few more respectable role models. I wanted to show you pictures of them, of my role models. So here's one, here's Mary Somerville. She was an early feminist and anti-slavery activist. She taught herself by reading books first in Latin and Greek and then math and then French so that she could translate Laplace, the mathematician and physicist into English for her first book. I know you know how to read textbooks, right? I know you do because I'm pretty sure over four years or five years, you've had a professor who wasn't so good at teaching, not so clear, not so organized, pretty terrible. And you were probably thinking, why is this happening to me? But you know, actually it's the best thing that happened to you because now you can read a textbook on your own and you can learn from it, which means the next 50 or 60 years are gonna be great for you. Um, she decided that she wasn't really a scientist. She didn't wanna call herself a scientist, but she wrote, a digest every year of all the science that was being discovered, 800 page digest of everything. It was a huge bestseller, sold thousands and thousands of copies. And this was in the 1800s. So she's totally a role model. There she is, right? I'm trying to do, I tried to do my hair sort of in a similar way, but it didn't work. The second role model I had is Rutherford. I don't know, Rutherford is a, he's the guy who found the nucleus, right? And, you know, I, I'm not sure about the mustache, but I love Rutherford. Um, and the thing I like most about him is uh, that he just used alpha particles for everything he did. He really liked alpha particles and he used them as a probe and he did amazing things. But the second thing I like about him, and I think you might share this, this affinity. Uh, in his lab, you weren't allowed to use the word universe. You weren't allowed to talk about the universe because he felt like that was just speculation and speculation doesn't belong in a physics lab. And I kind of like that because people have a lot of rules about labs. You can't drink coffee, you can't wear a big sweater, but that you can't talk about the universe. That's really got to be a really fantastic one. Uh, the third person is a very recent um, uh, role model for me. And this is Maria Gephardt Mayer. She is a hard drinking, chain smoking, Nobel prize winning physicist uh, who is fascinated with lifetimes, with how long it took things to decay. The lifetimes of isotopes, of atoms, of elements. Um, you know, she got a Nobel prize for figuring out why some isotopes were stable. And she actually is uh, my favorite role model right now, but none of those people could really replace this person, Leon Letterman, who didn't smoke, but who was at least funny. So I think even if you feel like none of your friends are physicists, you can find within physicists with a linear combination, a group of people that you could be friends with. And so I spent a lot of time talking to these people by, my, by myself during the pandemic. Um, so you may ask yourself also, uh, can I do physics with a bachelor's degree? And the answer is sure you can. I mean, you can even do physics without learning quantum mechanics. When I was young, I had an older friend uh, who only had an undergraduate degree, but he was also like a fighter pilot. He was a lot older. And um, once when he was on an aircraft carrier and you know, they fly off the aircraft carrier to the front and he flew off and then the pressure in his plane dropped and his plane dropped down and he sunk. And then he waited until the shadow of the aircraft carrier had passed by him and he pushed his eject button. For some reason he survived, but then he spent his life mapping the sea floor. He built transducers and the art, especially in the Arctic. So 
there are almost went to work in that company when I graduated. And I'm just saying there are a lot of things you can do and a lot of incredible, um, uh, incredibly interesting jobs you can do with just a undergraduate degree. I shouldn't say just. Um, so I ask all my former students to join LinkedIn with me so I can follow their professional path after they leave. I'm always amazed at the diversity of wonderful things students can do. As far as I can tell, everything is possible. Uh, instead of Facebook or Instagram, when I wanna pass the time, I looked at LinkedIn. Uh, like I look at the undergrad who became the CEO of Global Giving, which is a, uh, a company which, which you know, crowdsources charities so people can give to charities all on the same website. Or like the uh, student who became uh, one of the hosts of a, uh, This American Life podcast, or the student who became a lead sports data scientist for the Liverpool soccer team. There's just infinitely num many things you can do. And I kind of wish you would all write a love letter to physics before too long, maybe, maybe in the next week. And th this would be to tell the next students um, some of your favorite things. Like for me, terminal velocity. I just really love terminal velocity. Um, I, love, uh, I love the terminal velocity of clouds when they're falling. I love how raindrops don't kill us. I love how particle detectors work by electrons coming to a terminal velocity inside them. I also, also like escape velocity. I think I might just like velocity, escape velocity. I love the idea of escape. I love the idea of rockets leaving the earth or similarly of coffee molecules leaving the coffee cup and cooling. There's something great about escape velocity or I love electronics. I love how you can do calculus with electronics. You can make integrators and differentiators. You can make memories and forgetteries. Um, and I also love how light swirls around a black hole and how we can actually measure that. Um, so I wanna know what you would include in your love letter. And I'd love to see it if you wanna send me any, I mean, obviously send me the love letter to physics. <laughs> um, so, so much has happened in the past year or so, the pandemic, Black Lives Matter, the rise of anti-science thinking, the crisis of democracy. We have been awakened again, reminded again, that our society is a long way from where we want it to be. We have been reminded yet again that science in this case, in the form of immunology is crucial, is key to our survival. We can't go backward, there is only forward. But as the ground shifts under your feet, as the world is turned on its head. Uh, this, in this moment of time, the world is yours to change and you will be the agents of change in so many ways. By being in the world as physicists, you will change the world. How will you choose to be the agents of change? I'm keen to find out. I congratulate you on your accomplishments. I congratulate your families as well. Certainly does take a village. I hope that you will celebrate, celebrate happily today, but remember that I claim you as physicists going forward. We are in this world together now. I'm looking forward to your future. Thanks. Uh, th th thank you for this whole inspiring talk and uh, let's see and uh, these the, the thought provoking analogies I think will stick with with us and uh, really uh, having this love affair uh, with physics so uh, so so wow that that, that, that was uh, that was fantastic so to uh, to top that, but we can because we now will move on to uh, recognizing our our students for their accomplishments, and uh, we'll start with um, uh, our undergraduate students and our undergraduate advisor, Professor uh, Owen Long, uh, will 
uh, we'll take the floor and, and recognize the awards and our graduating students. Thank you, Ken. So one of the pleasures of my job is, is meeting and getting to know all of our undergraduate students. And um, we're here today to recognize their achievements and accomplishments. And, um, you know, speaking for myself, I'm, I'm very proud of all of you and you should be a proud of, of, of your achievements. So um, in this section, I would like to begin by recognizing all of the candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll show you their names and read them out. And then um, to give the, the students a, a, a chance to um, connect with all of you and for us to connect with them, I asked the students to submit a, a photo and if they want uh, you know, a message to all of us. And so I'll go through those. Uh, so that we can uh, get to know a little better um, our, our undergraduate students that are graduating and moving on to their next phase of their of their life. Um, and for the in that section, uh, if 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 you're connected, I would like you to unmute and turn your camera on and say hello to everyone briefly um, uh, when your slide comes up. But that's about all we have time for. And then after that, um, after we get to know our, our graduating students a little bit better, we'll uh, recognize some really outstanding students um, with some awards for undergraduates, all right? So let me begin by showing you this impressive list of students who are candidates for the Bachelor of Science degree. All right. So the candidates for Bachelor of Science degree are Brian Jomar Aboag, Eli Alani, Jocelyn R. Alvarado, Ariba Anzar, Cesar A. Bello, Juan C. Beltran, Joshua Bocanegra, Devante D. Kane, Jonathan C. Chai, Yuxi Chai, David N. Chang, Min C. Chow, Kai Chun Chen, Kianohia J. Daly, Francois J. Dubru, Francisco Flores, Carlos D. Garcia Ramon, Christian A. Garcia, Riley M. Gleason, Alfredo Gonzalez, Kate T. Goodrich, Brian A. Guzman, Ahmed Ibrahim, Sadaf Kadir, Justin Kuo, Melissa R. Lambert, Clarence J. Lau, Jia Yi Lu, Raymond T. Lai, Byron S. Menjavar, Hugo A. Mixco, Tony D. Montalvo, Daniel A. Morales, Han T. Nguyen, Joshua R. Oliver, Matthew J. O'Mara, Kishan S. Patel, Enrique Ramirez, Roberto Rojo, Hanlin Ruan, Rene A. Rubio Platero, Ulysses Ruiz, Noah M. Santiago, Dana M. Savin, Samyek H. Shah, James B. Simons, Andrew J. Smith, Jack J. Sun, Quang N. Thi, Race A. Thomas, Mikhail J. Val, and Charles T. Woods. So congratulations to all of you candidates of Bachelor of Science degree. You should all be very proud of your achievements and we celebrate your accomplishments. Okay, so um, what I wanna do next is uh, again, uh, introduce to you a, a few of our graduating students with a photograph and, and some of them submitted a message. 
And so again, when your um, when your slide comes up, if you're connected, please turn on your camera, unmute yourself, and say hello to everybody. And we'll all cheer while you do that. Okay. All right. So let me show you their slides. Okay. So Brian Aboag, are you connected? Give you a second. All right. Well, congratulations, Brian. You're looking good. Ariba Anzar. She has an amusing joke here for all of us. Are you connected? Maybe I'm spotlighted, so I can't, we can't hear you. All right, it's a cute dog. Let's keep going. Joshua Bocanegra. Canada hello, hello. Hi. Hi, congratulations. Hey, Josh. Thank you very much. Woo! <laughs> All right, thanks everyone. We'll be getting back to him in a minute too. <laughs> so stay tuned. But very nice picture. Yuxi Chai, are you with us? I don't know where that is. That's a very nice picture. Okay. Min Chao. It's a fantastic jacket you have on. In front of our UCR on campus. Francois de Brille. Hello, everyone. Hi, congratulations. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. We're going to get back to, all right. Uh, Sadaf. Kadir. Hi, hello. Congrats, hello. Congratulations. Yeah. Which is a nice message for all of us. All right, let's go on. Ray Lambert. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> Clarence Lau. Looking very sharp. Okay. Raymond Lai, candidate for Bachelor of Science. Byron Menjivar, are you with us? That's a nice message for us all. Tony Montalvo. Woohoo! Good job, girl. <laughs> Tony is with us. Congratulations. Hey. Han Nguyen. Hello, everybody. Congratulations. Oh, yay. Thank you. Kishan Patel. It's a nice picture. Andrew Smith. Hello, Hello everybody. <laughs> well done. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Welcome. Jack Sun. Hi, everyone. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Kyle Val. <laughs> Yay. Thank you very much. Hey, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. What is that machine? <laughs> uh, that is a an ROV. They do, uh, it's used for deep sea research. Wow, sounds cool. <laughs> Charles T. Woods, are you connected? There's a couple of very good books. I like those books. Okay, 
is that the end? I think so. I think our next segment is recognizing our undergraduate students with some awards, but let's uh, all congratulate our graduates of 2021 one more time. Should be very proud of your achievements. Okay, so let me um, go on to to uh, tell you, uh, recognize some, some very outstanding students. And but when I do that, I want to tell you a bit about um, some people, special people connected to the department that have sponsored uh, these awards that we're, that we're giving to these outstanding students. And the first one I'd like to tell you about is Robert Wilde. Robert L. Wilde came to UCR in 1953 at the time when the university was being formed. He was a founding member of the Department of Physics and laid the groundwork for much of the department as it is today. In addition to the development of many of the demonstrations and experiments used in the teaching laboratories, Bob was also well known in the local community for many hands-on feats in his role as Mr. Wizard at school and outreach events. He had a long and distinguished career, uh, record of scholarly achievement in condensed matter physics, which spanned 35 years, and Bob retired in 1988. So it's my pleasure to uh, recognize the following students uh, as outstanding first year undergraduate students. The first one I'd like to recognize is Peter Carney. Congratulations. Are you connected with us? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Congratulations, Peter. It's really great. Keep it up. <laughs> OK, uh, next, I'd like to recognize Aidan Wilkin. With the, he's the recipient of the Robert Wilde Family Outstanding First Year Undergraduate Student Award as well. Uh, hello. Congratulations. Hey! Well done. And you should also keep it up. Make us proud. <laughs> okay. So those are our uh, first year students that I'd like to recognize. Uh, let's see. And now, um, we're going to recognize some second year students. And the sponsor of these awards is Brown Williams. So let me tell you a bit about Brown Williams. So Brown Williams was an entrepreneur and physicist, and he received his bachelor's degree, his master's degree, and his PhD in physics from UC Riverside. Dr. Williams came to UCR from Alhambra after beginning the UC system at Berkeley. And he was one in one of the first master's graduate classes of physics at UCR. He stayed on after his undergraduate and master's level work to obtain his PhD. And he feels he received an excellent education for which he's very grateful and he has had an interesting and rewarding career that was made possible by his experience at UCR. Dr. Williams spent many of his early years at RCA laboratories where he held several research and managerial positions and perfected several inventions and successfully transitioned products to major commercial applications. So for any of you that has watched a football game in the past few years, you, you have seen one of his inventions, which is the magic yellow first down line that appears on the field, even though it's not actually there. So he was the, the guy that figured out how to do that. And it's in every football game that you watch today. So that's just an example of one, is, one of his uh, interesting inventions. All right. So I'd like to now recognize, um, <clears throat> sorry. So organize myself to recognize three outstanding second year students.
So the first recipient of the Outstanding Second Year Undergraduate Student Award is Justin Berzacchiello, or Cielo. I don't know if you had to pronounce it the Italian way. <laughs> Justin, are you with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Great. Congratulations. Yes, thank you, everyone, Justin. for the award. I'm very grateful. Well, you deserve it. All right. Next, I would like to recognize Shruti Palur Malampali. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very good work. And finally, our third outstanding second year undergraduate student is Emma Vo. Congratulations. Hi, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, we're halfway through the awards now. I'd like to um, next tell you a bit about the sponsor for the third year and senior level undergraduate awards for the department. And these are sponsored by Robert Stephen White. So let me tell you a little bit about him. Steve joined the UCR physics faculty in 1967 and initiated the new, at the time, astrophysics program. He was the founding associate director of the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics, serving in this position for 25 years until 1992. His research had significant impacts in multiple areas, including nuclear physics, space physics, plasma physics, and high energy astrophysics. At UCR, he was a strong, tireless, and well-respected academic leader and educator, serving as the physics department chairperson from 1970 to 1973. So, the recipients of the Robert Stephen White Award for Outstanding Third-Year Undergraduate Student are Mark Noyan, congratulations. Are you connected? Maybe he couldn't be with us today, but we still appreciate his achievements. Next, I would like to recognize Tristan Rojo. Congratulations. Hello, thank you. Hey, You're congrats, welcome. Tristan. Thank you. <laughs> That's Kristen. Tristan has some big plans. We're going to do some interesting projects in the physics department. All right, next, our third third year undergraduate student, outstanding un, uh, third year undergraduate student is Tyler Rossauer. Congratulations. Hi, thank you so much. All right. Oh, actually, uh, since Stephen White is, is the sponsor for the next awards too, I don't need to stop sharing. So let me go back to that. So finally, we would like to recognize three outstanding graduating senior students. And these are all amazing students. Uh, really outstanding accomplishments that are going to go on and do great things, I'm sure. So the first student is Joshua Bocaneg Bocanegra. Congratulations. Josh! <laughs> thank, yeah, thank you, Josh. It is an honor to accept right. this award, so thank you all very much. Welcome. Good job. <laughs> Next, Ray Lambert. Congratulations. Hey. Thank you. Huzzah. Yay. You're outstanding. And the final undergraduate student award for a senior goes to Tony Montalvo. Congratulations. Yeah. Made us all very proud. Thank you. Congratulations, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, 
that ends our uh, recognition of our awesome undergraduate students. So um, it's a pleasure to, to recognize your achievements today. So congratulations. All right, th thank you, uh, Owen, and uh, heartfelt uh, congratulations from uh, all of the faculty. We're very proud of uh, all of our graduates and award winners. Uh, keep in touch. Uh, hopefully, well, next year, I think we'll be back in person. You'll, you're always invited to our uh, award ceremonies, so you can get your Thai food that you missed out on this year. Uh, but uh, please uh, do keep in touch. Uh, uh, so now we'll move on to our recognizing our graduate students and our graduate advisor, Professor Jory Yarmoff, uh, will, uh, will uh, do that. So uh, go ahead, Jory. Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, I first wanna congratulate all the undergraduates for finishing their bachelor's degrees and all of the undergraduate award winners that Owen mentioned. Um, congratulations to all of you and hope you all take the next step in continuing your career in a positive direction, just like today. Um, what I'm going to do is present things backwards from the way Owen did it, but I will be acknowledging our PhD recipients and our graduate student award winners. And Ken already took away my joke about the Thai food. I think I might have said it last year, but we usually have had Thai food when we're in person. Uh, the pandemic's been tough and a strain on a lot of a lot of things. I ex hope expect that next year we'll actually be back together in person for this. Uh, but still, this is a nice virtual event. So thank you everybody for coming. So let me share my screen. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the graduate program. And first thing I want to do is uh, mention those students who were candidates for master's degrees uh, this past year. Uh, most of the students that get master's degrees get them on their way to their PhD. So these students are um, generally continuing in their PhD program, but they happen to be, uh, these are the students that are listed, the ones that earned master's degrees during this past academic year. So I'd like to congratulate all of these students for doing that. So good work, keep up the good work. And we'll be seeing you um, in your PhD gowns before very long. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start announcing the graduate student awards, all right? So first we're gonna talk, we're going to give out an award for outstanding teaching assistance. And I'd like to ask the award winners when I announce your name, if you'd like to unmute yourself and say something, um, please feel free. We, you know, our students not only um, earn a master's degree while they're getting their PhD, they also um, learn how to teach by acting as teaching assistants. And some of the students really excel in their TA duties and deserve awards. Uh, we take TA, we take teaching and TA very seriously. So these are very important awards. And I'd like to acknowledge the first winner is Arazu Atesmarad. Are you there, Arazu? Yes, I'm here. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, very deserving. Next one is Garrett Lopez. Garrett, would you like to say something? Hello, Ron. I'm very flattered. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Ian McConaughey. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's a it's an honor to uh, to receive this award. Thank you very much for uh, for your consideration. Jonathan Turner. Uh, hi. Uh, thank you. Uh, to the lab techs and staff and faculty for making the transition to online excellent. And uh, thanks, for thanks to the students who recognize greatness when they see it. Ha. Thank you. And our final teaching assistant winner is Matthew Wilson. Matthew, are you here? 
Okay, I guess he's not here. So we will move on. Um, so I'm now going to move on to the awards. And the first, or well, the rest of the awards, the endowed awards. So the first award is the Albert Stats Award for, you know, exceptional skills in designing and building physics apparatus. Now, Al Stats was the first head of uh, what was called the prototype building facility in, inside of our physics building. We now call it the machine shop. But that is a really important part of a lot of our faculty's research. To show his passion for research and teaching, um, Al Stats and his family have endowed this prize and it's awarded to the graduate student who has best utilized the um, facility to conduct their research or has built an impressive piece of equipment um, as part of their re thesis research. So this year's winner is Shirash Redmi, and he's a third year student working on the magnetic resonance of ordered spin systems at microwave frequencies. The project he's working on are rather demanding and require tedious measurements in the lab, as well as skillful nanofabrication, nanofabrication and material deposition in the clean room. Despite this high workload, Shirash also led the design of a novel spectrometer for magnetic residence at low temperatures and high fields. And the performance of the spectrometer is apparently excellent and it allows a group to study spin dynamics and uniaxial antiferromagnets. So Shirash, are you here to say something? Uh, hi everyone. Um, I'm very excited and honored to receive this recognition. Uh, thank you so much, Professor Basuko my lab mates, uh, all the faculties and committees and everyone here. And I hope to have a great in-campus year and the Thai food as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you. You're in, congratulations. Okay, our next award is the um, Ben Shedd Award for Outstanding First Year Student. And to tell you a little bit about Ben Shen first, uh, he was a distinguished professor of physics in our department he graduated from Berkeley in 65 and joined UCR in 1969 and was at UCR for 38 years. Uh, he was instrumental in founding the experimental high energy group in our department and uh, to the building of our department of physics. He served as chair three separate times. In fact, he was chair when I was hired and then he was chair again later and I served as vice chair under him. Uh, his honors included election to Fellow of American Physical Society, the American Association for the Advancement of Science, and others. Uh, he held a number of visiting scientist appointments and served on many UCR campus and UC system-wide committees. And he also acted as an informal science advisor to the late Congressman George Brown. So in Ben's honor, we are giving out the Outstanding First Year Graduate Student Awards. And these are based largely for how well the students did in their first year classes, which was particularly challenging this year because of the pandemic. So our first winner is Wen Jun Chang, and she was actually overseas during the, um, for the whole first year and took the classes from her home country and did extremely well. Um, are you there, Wen Jin? Yeah, hello everyone. Um, thanks for um, uh, thanks for giving me this prize. Um, it's an honor for me, and uh, I will uh, keep hardworking in the uh, in the future. Um, thanks for all your help. Thanks for all the professors and uh, um, my advisors. And uh, thank you. Okay. Great, thank you. Congratulations. And our second one is Troy Losi. Woohoo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Troy, you want to say anything or did, was that you? Uh, that was not me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, just, thanks everyone. This is a cool award. So thank you. <laughs> okay, congratulations. And we'll be seeing you, both of you, um, in person this fall. Okay, so our next award is the Ben Shen Award for Outstanding Junior Graduate Researcher. And uh, I've already told you about Ben Chen, so I'm just gonna go right ahead and tell you about the award winners. First, we have Ming-Fen Ho. Um, 
many students will know Ming Feng because he helps to organize the annual Sierra workshop for UCR's graduate students. His research is on applying machine learning to challenging problems in physics and astronomy. Uh, by finding neutral hydrogen in the universe, he saved astronomers several years of manually sorting through spectra. And his most recent work combines simulations and will be critical for measuring properties of dark energy with the upcoming Roman Space Telescope. So Ming, are you here to say something? Yes, I'm here. Um, thank you for the award. And also thanks um, the department for the hard work uh, during the pandemic and send my PI, Simeon, and my LMS. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Our next um, winner is Haiyu Lu, um, who worked with, I forgot to mention, Ming Feng worked with Professor Simeon Bird. Haiyu Lu is working with Professor Jing Shi. Um, Haiyu is an academically well prepared, motivated, and productive student. He was originally planning to be a theorist, but then um, he learned better and decided to join Professor Shi's experimental CM condensed matter physics group. Um, he had to work very hard to learn the experimental methods, but after a few months, he was extremely proficient at making devices. And he also understands the physics behind the measurements and often comes up with good ways to analyze the results on his own, on his own because of his very strong physical intuition and his ability to see the big picture. Are you? Yeah, thank you. Hello, uh, everyone. Thank you. I uh, just want to maybe keep the momentum and keep moving. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you. Congratulations. So our next award is the outs is the Ann Kernan Award for Outstanding Senior Graduate Student Researchers. So these are students generally in their um, fourth or fifth year who are getting closer to graduating. Uh, but I first want to tell you about Ann Kernan. Uh, she graduated from University College in Dublin. With, a, with her PhD in 1957 and joined our faculty of our department in 1967. Uh, and she was a founding also like Ben Shen was a founding member of the experimental high energy physics group. She rose to leadership positions in the American Physical Society. She was a divisional counselor for the division of particles and fields. And on campus she chairs, served both as chair of the department and later as vice chancellor of research. Uh, after a very successful career, including the discoveries of the WNZ bosons, bosons at CERN and the discovery of the top quark at Fermilab, she retired from the research in 1995. So first of our award winners for the Ann Kernan Award is Chia Fen Chang. And Chia Feng is a fourth year student who's already published 12 papers with nine of them in high impact journals and at least three more expected this year. His work involves theoretical, which is a non-luminous unknown material that makes up 80% of our universe, and it interacts with atomic matter via a dark force. It's one of the most important areas that cosmologists are currently studying because we know this stuff is there, but we don't know much about it. Uh, and although Chia Feng is still at an early stage of his career, he's already demonstrated a level of productivity that shows great promise for a successful academic career. Chia Feng, would you like to say something? Yes, thank you for the introduction. I would like to thank my um, PI, Yanil. She not only teach, my, teach me about the research physics, but only help my, to improve my life. So it's a very, very important person in my life. Then on the other hand, the, the UC Riverside helped me so much. I mean, Department of Physics, not only in the research, you know, in also in the life. So uh, thank you a lot, thank you. Okay, congratulations, thank you. So our second winner for this is Yinan Dong. Uh, Professor Roy Zandi was her research advisor. Yinan is a biophysicist, a biophysics theorist and her projects have included the role of RNA on the stability of viral shells, the growth of HIV shells, and the formation of coronaviruses inside of cells. Um, some of this work involves helping experimentalists analyze their data. For example, she developed code that's gonna be used to explain experimental data about coronaviruses that was collected by professors Moedin and Coleman's groups. These are difficult and time-consuming projects that require advanced mathematical and analytical skills along with the ability to perform numerical analysis, computer simulations. 
She's written several pages, one of which was highlighted as an editor's suggestion on the Physical Review webpage. Um, Yunana, are you here to say uh, yeah. a few more? Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Um, every, all, all of these award winners have been very impressive. They're very, very tough to choose. Um, now, we're going to get to the Robert Poe Scholarship, Memorial Scholarship Award, which is actually the most prestigious award our department gives out. Uh, Robert, the Robert Poe Award is for the outstanding performance by a PhD who is now graduating. So you earn this when you graduate. And Robert Poe joined the UCR faculty in 1964 and was one of the founding members of our department. And he initiated the program in relativistic heavy ion physics. But beyond that, he was a true public servant and devoted much, time, much of his time to activities outside of research and teaching. He had a passion for energy conservation, for example. During the energy crisis of the 1970s, he helped the city of Riverside and other countries such as Taiwan plan for the future. He was also involved in the construction of the first synchrotron and uh, atomic physics research group at National Taiwan University. It was on a trip to Taiwan that unfortunately he passed away due to a, because of a heart attack. Uh, at National Taiwan University honored him by naming a building after him, uh, the Robert T. Poe Memorial Lecture Hall. The city of Riverside also honored him with the Robert T. Poe substation, which is located in downtown Riverside. So if you're downtown, you might be able to find the substation named after one of our um, former faculty members. His family and friends have endowed the Poe Award for outstanding graduate research. <laughs> okay, the first winner of the Poe Award is Gabriel Ciccini, who's Research advisor was Alan Mills. You'll be hearing a little bit more from him later because he's also a graduating student. Uh, Gabe received his bachelor's degree from UCR and then started to work with Professor Mills back then. Since joining the PhD program, he's been the lead person on a project to develop the world's highest density positron machine, with the eventual goal being to make a positronium Bose-Einstein condensate and a gamma ray laser. Gabe has overseen building, testing, improving, and operating this very complex apparatus. For his dissertation, he produced a previously unobserved positronium plus ion, created a highly spin polarized dense pulson positron beam, and been a co-author on a series of publications. He's also done a lot of mentoring of UCR undergraduates, community college students, and high school students. Um, and I also wanna note that he had to overcome many obstacles in his life and it's a pleasure to see him become deserving of and winning this prestigious award as he earns his PhD and prepares for the next phase of his career. So, Gabriel, are you here to acknowledge the award? Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Great. Thank oh. you, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Uh, so our second Robert Poe Memorial Award winner is Nima Jaratab, who work with Professor Baram Mobasher. Um, Neiman's, Neiman's research productivity was outstanding. He graduated in April as a co-author on 21 papers, um, for each of which he did a substantial amount of work, and he was the first author on three of these. His research topics included studying properties of galaxies in different environments, the large-scale structure of the universe, and the identification and study of protoclusters. His work spanned a large number of projects and Nima made substantive and innovative contributions to all of them, uh, such as formulating new methods to identify galaxy clusters, developing a machine learning technique to predict the properties of galaxies, cataloging gal galaxy clusters and making the results available to other astrophysicists. And he also played a major role in one of the largest galaxy surveys ever done. Because of his abilities and demonstrated accomplishments, he was offered a postdoc at UC Irvine to join the newly funded NASA Sphere X mission, which will start this summer. So Neem has clearly distinguished himself as being fully deserving of this prestigious Poe Award. Nima, are you here to accept the award? Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, thank you so much for the honor. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. 
So those are our award winners. I'd like to congratulate all of them. So please send your congratulations to all the award winners. And we're going to move on to the last and final part of our program, which is to reward, to acknowledge our um, graduating students. So the candidates for doctor of philosophy degree, uh, I'm going to show them all here, but then we're going to um, the ones who are actually on the Zoom screen, um, ones who are actually on the Zoom screen will be uh, shown in the slide. I'm gonna ask their research advisors to speak for maybe um, two minutes or less about each candidate, okay? We're gonna to try to keep those short, say something, you know, tell us something about the candidate. So the full list is Geraldo Alvarez, Hamid Asasi, Gabriel Ciccini, who you just heard from, Nima Chartab Sultani, who we also just heard from, uh, Mohammed Hamdi El Hashash, Marzia Jarifan Yazani, sorry if I'm mispronouncing your names a little bit, Ethan Jan, Yi Jang, Martra Mitra, Michael Shama, Jamar Jeremiah Van Baren, and Michael Wolves. Okay, so congratulations to all of you. But now we want to hear a little bit more about what you did. A PhD is not a, an easy task. Average time to degree is six years. And so they've all worked real hard. And I'd like to ask the research advisors to say something about them. Oh, Wei Li Zhang, I didn't realize there was one more. Okay, uh, we'll hear more about him later. Okay, so the first student is Gerardo Alvarez, whose research advisor is Professor Haibo Yu. Um, Haibo, is, would you like to say something about Gerardo? Yes. Um, yeah, so Gerardo is my student. And uh, so when he uh, started with me, uh, I immediately realized that he likes to approach a research problem uh, with the first principles. So this is very unique. I think it's not so usual because it takes a lot of time for a student to realize the importance of this this approach. I also found that he is very uh, talented um, for performing sophisticated calculations. So every time there's a mismatch between his results and my results, most likely he's right. <laughs> and uh, together with him, we have figured out how dark matter halo changes if the dark matter has novel interactions. And we also figured out the distribution of dark matter near a supermassive black holes and it derived the strongest constraints on some of the properties of dark matter. So during the pandemic, he uh, has a very young family to take care and at the same time he has to keep up a project going, attending regular meetings, a lot of work. So this really impresses me. In addition, he is a volunteer instructor for U UCI Extension Center, which he teaches physics to adults in Spanish. So this, I heard this is the first of uh, this is first program of its kind in California, probably in uh, this country as well. He really deep, uh, deeply cares about the community and uh, congratulations, Gerardo. Okay, thank you. Gerardo, would you like to say anything? <laughs> I'd just like to say uh, thank you. Thank you to Haibo as my advisor and just uh, UCR in general, all the professors, all the students. It's been a great experience and thank you. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Our next PhD recipient um, is Hamid Asasi, um, whose professor, his research advisor is Professor Mike Mulligan. Uh, Mike, would you like to say a few words about Hamid? Yeah, sure, can you, can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Yeah, so uh, Hamid and I, well, I, I started uh, UCR and I was really lucky uh, that um, Hamed uh, wanted to work with me, uh, him and Marta, who will come up in a few more minutes. Uh, and so it, it, it was really a great experience uh, to really learn from him. Uh, the, the work that he's highlighted here, um, I mean, he, he figured everything out. Um, and um, uh, yeah, it, it was really interesting. And I, I was always um, confident whenever, whenever he said something you know, it was correct or, or whatever, I, I could be confident that it was. Uh, and so, uh, so thank you and I'll uh, uh, good luck. Hey, 
Thank you. Ahmad, would you like to say a few yes. words? Uh, thank you, thank you, and uh, thank you, Michael, for being the being a great advisor. And yeah, thank you all. Okay, congratulations. Our next PhD recipient is Gabriel Ciccini, who worked with Professor Alan Mills. Alan, would you like to say a few words? Alan, I guess Alan's not here. I'm sure he would have had really good things to say about you, Gabe. He certainly has said very good things about you when he's talked to me. Um, Can I say something? Uh, uh, sure, Harry, um, Harry. Okay. Hi, uh, I just want to recognize Gabe. He's uh, the key graduate student who has been working with Professor Mills, uh, providing positrons uh, in a a uh, significant machine for all of our experiments in the lab, including the one that I lead on the 1S, 2S spectroscopy. And it's always a pleasure working with Gabe and uh, his ability to keep all of the machines running and delivering positrons has uh, made everybody move forward. Thank you very much, Gabe. Okay. Right. Thank you, congratulations. Okay, our next um, PhD, Graduate is Nima Chartab Sultani, whose research advisor is Professor Baram Mobasher. Baram? Uh, yes. Um, so Nima uh, came to UCR uh, with a lot of enthusiasm in doing astronomy. He comes from engineering background. So the first three months he spent reading the comps, and after three months he passed the exam, uh, and uh, he started his research a year early. He's graduating, as you said, Jory, with 21 uh, papers, uh, being co-authors authors on 21 papers. Apart from that, he's now an expert in data science, in machine learning techniques, and he wrote a uh, code on logic set structure and uh, becoming an expert in identifying and studying protoclusters of galaxies. During this time, he also applied uh, um, techniques in astrophysics uh, to medical sciences uh, in finding tumors in, in humans' bodies using the same method as we find galaxies in the universe. So, um, Nima, you should take pride in how far you have come and uh, have faith in how far you can go. Uh, he's now um, uh, moving into a postdoctoral position at UC Irvine. Um, working on NASA's uh, future project, uh, SPHEREX. Uh, so I congratulate you and I wish you all the best. The success is the ability to go from one failure to another with no loss of enthusiasm, as Winston Churchill once said. All the best and have a great Thank life in front of you. Thank you. Thank you, Baram. Nima, would you like to say a couple yeah. of words? Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Mubasher, for your kind words. It's been a pleasure to be part of your group. I also want to thank uh, the entire department for all their help and support over the last five years. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Our next PhD graduate is Marja Jafari Yazna Yazani, um, whose research advisor was also Professor Baram Obasher. Baram? Sure. Um, so Marzi started um, at, at UCR and uh, she basically started a new project um, and is continued the project which one of my students had started and it, it was promising and she continued it in studying the high resolution um, imaging studies of galaxies, uh, something that, that uh, had not been done uh, before. It's just very, very new uh, field that you uh, get high resolution images of galaxies and study properties of, of galaxies from that. And uh, then um, she, she won the award of a UCR Carnegie uh, Fellowship. Uh, and she spent the last two years uh, funded by Carnegie Institution in Pasadena and UCR Graduate Division uh, to do research in Carnegie, uh, working on um, old galaxies at distant parts of the universe. Uh, so she's graduating uh, with, um, with a number of papers um, and with, with three papers, and uh, she's done a, a great job in, in, in the research. So Marzi, it, it takes a lot of courage uh, to come uh, all the way you have come and uh, so successfully completing and accomplishing what uh, you've done. 
uh, it's good to have a journey towards the end, but it's the journey that matters, not the end. Um, so she's now um, been awarded a postdoctoral position in, um, in uh, Caltech, IPAC. And she's starting her postdoctoral position uh, 1st of July in a few weeks. Uh, I wish you all the best and uh, wish you have a great life. Thank you, Barum. Marja, would you like to say something? Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi. I just want to, yeah, I just want to thank my advisor, my family, my friends, and all the faculties who I had great courses with. Thank you. Okay, congratulations to you, and good luck on your new position. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay, our next PhD graduate is Ethan Yan, whose research advisor was Prof Professor Laura Sale Salas. Laura, would you like to say something about him? Sure, about thanks, Joy. Um, so yeah, Ethan, work, Ethan worked on um, numerical simulations of galaxies and in particular of uh, low mass galaxies, which we call dwarf galaxies. Um, so in the regime of dwarf galaxies, the mapping between what we can see and what we call dark matter is um, unclear. And Ethan made contributions towards uh, bettering that understanding. So Ethan worked with as part of a collaboration for his uh, first two papers, um, what we call the FIRE collaboration, which involves uh, people from Caltech, UC Irvine, and uh, also UC Davis, but also, also other institutions. And he really flourished um, in, in his second paper that we just submitted a few days ago, uh, where he really uh, pushed uh, forward uh, a draft uh, and um, and a, a project combining the uh, advice and, and ideas of everyone in that collaboration. Um, they work very independently and um, yeah, a success, a, a, a draft that uh, you, Ethan, should feel very proud of. Uh, for the third project coming up, on, on his on, on the pipeline is um, you know attending one of the perhaps longest-standing problems in cosmology, what we call the cusp versus core problem, that is regarding how dark matter distributes in the inner regions of uh, dwarf galaxies. So clearly, Ethan does not shy to challenge, and um, um, so it's it's it's, uh, it's fantastic to to throw a problem at him and see what comes out on the other side. Among his uh, superpowers are um, visualization and plots. Ethan comes up with the best looking plots. And, and this one that you see here in this slide does not even make justice because of the low resolution. Um, and and I, it's not only me saying this, um, everyone in the collaboration and co-authors um, have even come to me and say, oh, you're, you know, the student is, is, is amazing, very nice plot. Um, and also the other one, and this one is not easy to, to really get is the writing. Ethan, uh, of course, it takes time because writing is a, it's a very painful process, but whatever comes out um, that he uh, circulates or he sends is almost a final product. And that is also something you should be very proud of, um, Ethan. That's uh, really an achievement. Um, Ethan is uh, very passionate about education and uh, we got involved in um, making videos for electricity and magnetism uh, sort of general physics course uh, just before the pandemic when you know online learning sounded exciting uh, so that was just before that and uh, Ethan really performed amazingly and they made like the most good looking and entertaining videos explaining electricity and magnetism that I could even thought about um, and I just wanted to read so I ended up having to use them in the you know pandemic times that everyone hates uh, videos so I'm sorry about that Ethan but um, I wanted to read maybe one of the comments that one of the students wrote and I said send my congrats to the long-haired dude in the videos he's funny but also helps me learn and um, like that I have another another few pri prizing um, Ethan's work so it's always uh, fantastic. So nothing, I'm just uh, looking forward to uh, our last summer working together, which I hope it will be full of, um, you know, discovery. And I'm sure Ethan is, uh, is ready and looking forward to move into having his own chance of um, educating the new generation of physicists. Okay. 
Thank you. Ethan, would you like to acknowledge? Yeah, thanks, Laura. That was awesome. Um, I didn't actually know that you used those videos. It's really cool to hear. Um, but yeah, thanks for all your help um, so far in the PhD. Definitely looking forward to rounding out this third publication and finishing everything up and then moving on to my own opportunities. And thanks to everyone else who has supported me along the way. Thanks. Great. Congratulations. Now, um, Professor Mills just informed me that he's actually on and would like to say something about Gabe himself. Alan? He was having computer problem, but he just tech, he just messaged me that his computer was working. Alan, are you there? Hello. Hi, we can hear you now. Now you can hear me. I unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you no? now. Yes, yes, we can hear you okay. now. I just wanted to say, <laughs> Jake gave the son I think we just lost you. Okay. Sorry, Alan, but we've just lost your your signal again. So maybe um we could talk later. But Obviously, Gabe did really, really wonderful things while he was here. Uh, so I'm going to move to the next graduate, which is Yi Jiang, um, who did his work with Professor Leonid Ryatko. Leonid, would you like to say something about Yi? Yes, sure. Do you hear me? Yeah, a little low volume, but I can hear you. Yeah. Now it should be better. <clears throat> All right, so he came to my group from an experimental group, and I was worrying first, you know, how well he will do, but eventually, you know, hard work paid, and he is responsible for some of the very nice results, and in particularly regarding the phase diagram of some models which are related to quantum error correction codes. And <clears throat> so I wish, I would like to wish he best of luck in his future career. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Um, I don't know if he's here. Are you here, Yi? Yeah, he had warned me that he may not be able to make it, but we'll send his congratulations. Okay, the next student, I'm, I'm doing these in alphabetical order in case you didn't notice, um, is Amartya Mitra whose research advisor was Professor Mike Mulligan. Mike, would you like to say something about him? Yes. Uh, yeah, so uh, like I said earlier for Hamad, um, uh, I was really lucky to have uh, both Hamad and Amarta here um, uh, join, join me when I started at UCR um, uh, to explore various things. So one thing um, about Amarta, besides doing some physics research, uh, I admire his ability to um, and um, courage to really change kind of uh, focus in his research um, uh, to uh, things related to machine learning. So, uh, and his, his, his change there has inspired me to try to learn something about that too. So, so I wish him uh, the best in the future. Okay, thank you. Amarcha, would you like to respond? I guess he's not here either. They, okay, our next uh, PhD recipient is Michael Shama, whose research advisor was Professor Yano Kui. And would you like to say something, Yano? You're muted. Sorry, Bonnie. I was talking, I thought I was, okay. Yeah, Michael is my first graduating PhD student. Uh, he's a first generation college student. Uh, he's very bright and diligent and has become a, a very competent researcher uh, through these five years of training. Uh, after graduation, he will move 
to work as a postdoctoral fellow at the leading uh, physics research lab, Triumph, in Vancouver, Canada. Uh, Michael told me that Triumph was among his top choices when he applied for uh, the jobs, and he's always uh, wanted to visit Vancouver. So I'm very happy about his accomplishments. Uh, outside physics, uh, Michael is a skilled surfer. Uh, Vancouver is along the coastline, a very beautiful place. So I suppose you have uh, a lot of opportunities to enjoy surfings and other fun things while doing physics. Uh, again, my uh, congratulations to his graduation with a PhD degree in physics, and I wish him great success in his future career. Okay, thank you. Michael, would you like to respond? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, especially to my advisor. Um, without her guidance, I wouldn't have like gained the skills and expertise, especially in baryogenesis, um, and wouldn't have had this opportunity to go do postdoctoral research in Vancouver. So thank you to my advisor. And I'd also like to say thank you to the department for all of your support. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Um, our next PhD recipient is Michael Wools, whose research advisor is Professor Leonid Gryadko. Leonid? Yes. So Michael was in my group for almost 10 years, first as an early undergraduate student doing research, and then as a graduate student as well. Hard work paid during this time that he was in my group. He worked with various projects from quantum information to perturbation, and he wrote a lot of code and particular. Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. So he wrote a lot of code and was using the high performance cluster machines. And he just got a job at Boeing. So congratulations to Mike. And yeah, best of luck to you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Would you like to respond with a few words? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Leonid. Uh, uh, and my the whole group, Yi and Wele, helped a lot too. And then all the professors I had, both as an undergrad, ACRM to grad school. Thank you. Yay, okay. Michael. <laughs> you have a fan base out there. It's good to hear. Um, okay, our final PhD candidate is at the end of the alphabet, Wei Li Zhang, whose research advisor was also Professor Priyadko. Okay, so let me say a few words. So yeah. Wei Li is uh, the first in his family to, you know, to be in college. And so yet he is one of my best graduate students during my career at UCR. So, you know, he's very, very nice, very good. And not only he was doing excellent research and got a lot of results that I'm, you know, I'm proud of and he can be proud of. Yeah, but also he helped to, you know, to teach other students. So he was doing tutorials on the use of computer cluster and on, on other things and, you know, and helped me a lot. He was also conducting group meetings while I was away. And uh, now he's got a postdoctoral position at Duke University. So congratulations, Wele, and best of luck to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Wele, would you like to say, say something? Um, yeah, thank you everyone. It's uh, basically my uh, advice and your need. Thanks for all the guidance in terms of research and uh, also help me to try uh, many different opportunities. Uh, it's a great um, memory in UCR and to learn all the things about research. Uh, also, I want to thank my family and the friends and uh, also the Wolves who are here today. I will always remember the first Christmas spent with your families. Uh, thank you. Okay, thank you and congratulations. Um, I'd like to congratulate all our graduates and award recipients, and um, like you all to also thank you for sharing in this graduation recognition ceremony, um, online version. And next year, hopefully, we will we will be in person. And um, Nick, and I'm sorry that there was no hooding ceremony for all of you PhD recipients, but we'll hopefully this made up for it in some degree. We get to hear from you and hear something from your advisors. So congratulations to all of the graduate students. And I will now turn it back over to Professor Barish. Uh, thank you, Joy. 
and uh, from the faculty, all the faculty and staff, then to the UCR Physics and Astronomy class of 2021. Uh, congratulations, and uh, and we uh, wish you all that's best. Um, do keep in touch. Uh, we really do want to know how you do and uh, come back visit. Have Thai food. Um, as a closing, uh, we're going to play the UCR alma mater. Uh, just a little bit of background. So um, uh, a professor of music, Brian Adams, joined UCR faculty in 1987, but he was just made to discover that the university did not have a school song. So he uh, was determined to uh, make one, but he uh, wanted someone to write the lyrics. So he had a competition and the winner of the competition was Bob Wild, who was, who you've heard before, was basically the founding faculty uh, of the Department of, of Physics and Astronomy. Uh, so the um, uh, Brian Adams had written, I sat down one beautiful winter afternoon, inspired by the hills surrounding the university, the bell tower and the orange groves, uh, it composed Hail Fair UCR. And it's meant to be sung in full, every word and every note at commencement uh, and other uh, university events. So uh, again, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, if you wanna stay afterwards, I invite the faculty, especially with graduating uh, students to stay on. And if families would like to meet with an uh, advisor, we can uh, form uh, breakout rooms. Uh, so now we'll go ahead and play the alma mater, and then uh, those that uh, want to stay afterwards, uh, I would encourage you to do so, uh, both the faculty and uh, students and their families. You see our fair alma mater, jewel of old you see, took a shining vision. Light to set my free, seeking ever, yielding never, all stars near and far. What a love back to the highlands, hail fair you see It's a very nice rendition, even in the time of uh, COVID, uh, so uh, the, the Zoom production. So this concludes then our formal program. Uh, thank you everyone for participating. Uh, again, congratulations. And, um, and if you wanna stay on uh, and uh, go into breakout rooms, uh, you're, you're welcome uh, to do so. In any case, good afternoon, uh, stay touch. And uh, and again, uh, congratulations.